¡Esta mierda de perro! ¡Esta mierda! ¡Cabrones! Esto es lo que está diciendo la vecina. It's an animal world out there. Watch the World Animal Awareness Society channel and feel right at home. Come, sit, subscribe, and stay a while. Hi, we are being harassed by our neighbor, and it's really bad. You see, when we started this rescue, we faced a choice. One, we could start our own shelter. Second, we could start a network of foster homes. Starting our own shelter will mean that, uh, that we will be hosting tens, maybe hundreds of animals, and we will be trying to, to find homes for them. I always found that this, uh, this, this path was a, a very complicated one. You see, if you look at animal rescues around the world, or even locally, whenever you have a shelter, there is a tendency to store a larger number of animals that the organization can really afford. Now, there's of course always the goodwill of the people running the organization, the will to save as many as possible. But the fact is that these places end up being a place where people throw animals over the fence. And look, I've seen so many horrible things, especially in, I mean, I've seen in Turkey, in Bulgaria, in Romania, overcrowded shelters, shelters where hundreds of animals agonized to death, they are never adopted. Of course, on the other hand, you have really well-managed shelters like Soy Dog, like Takis, like so many others in the States. I mean, they are amazing places. It all depends on the people that run the place. All right. On the other hand, we could choose to build a network of foster homes and then have no shelter, and then the animal will be rescued, will go to the hospital, will go to a foster, and then from there it will go to a final home. So we opted for that one. But in the end, we ended up having a kind of a hybrid model. We still have our foster homes, and there are many animals that go directly home from the hospital or from a foster. But we ended up needing a place for animals that were not adoptable, either immediately or in the future. Animals that were on wheelchairs, animals that had chronic diseases that made them really difficult to adopt, or simply animals that because of their behavior or because of their you know, quirks, then people wouldn't be interested in them. And this is why we, we built the White House and the Pink House, two beautiful places where animals can stay for life, where animals are part of the life of this rescue, and we've been making so many videos about, uh, about those two places, right? Now, so, as you know, our main location is the, is the White House. It's a beautiful place, uh, and we've done endless videos about the White House. But then we also have the Pink House, which is a smaller place, and which normally doesn't feature as much in our videos uh, because it has less animals, and also because the cats live there. All right, look, we have a problem with the neighbor directly across the pink house. It, oh my God, I tell you, this is unscripted. Look, this, this video has no, no, no script or anything. I'm just, I'm just trying to open up. It's, an, it's a nightmare, really, really, it's a nightmare. It all started with, uh, with uh, hearing the woman screaming, uh, then the screams, became more and more uh, violent, harassing. And right now we basically have a situation where a mad woman is uh, insulting us, is throwing things over the fence and is threatening to, to kill our dogs. Now, it's just terrible. It's terrible. Also, I mean, it is even worse because when you think that our places are totally silent, Mm -hmm. 
I mean, you can actually see it on this video. Please, please watch this video carefully and tell me what you see. Esto es lo que está diciendo la vecina. Que les quiere tirar veneno. Esa señora no está bien, ¿eh? Esta señora no está bien. ¡Qué puto de mierda de perro! ¡No deja de la puta mierda de ladrar! If you notice in that video, you don't see any dogs. I mean, our dogs are most of the day sleeping inside the house. Sometimes they are outside walking around peacefully. It's a really nice place. And the dogs are so calm. There is no stress. There's no reason I mean, for them to bark or be violent or anything like this. Like it happens in most shelters. But that woman has become obsessed. My God. Seriously, she's uh, seriously harassing us. She's posting on Facebook, on groups, and she's like threatening to call the authorities because she says that we have an illegal breeding problem and that uh, that we are we are animal abusers. And I don't know. It's just really bad. It's really bad. I suspect there is a there's a mental health issue behind this uh, this uh, video and behind the insults and all the craziness that you see. But it's kind of worrying, really. It's kind of worrying. We don't know what to do. Maybe we could place a police report. I don't know. Um, we are being very careful, you see? Uh, when, a new, when a new dog arrives to our place, we are very careful introducing him to the new location, you know, to the other friends. Uh, we have installed a camera system in each room so that we can monitor uh, their sleeping patterns. What time do we, they wake up? What do they do? They bark, they don't bark. Uh, I mean, we know exactly how each one of our animals is at every uh, single second. But that woman is a nuisance. What can we do? What can we do? 
And the thing is that we're really not, not bad neighbors, we're actually pretty good. You see, last year we had a problem ourselves. The neighbor on the other side of the villa was a squatter. You know, in Spain we have these weird laws where if there is an empty house, somebody can come in and squat in the house and they have the right to stay there. And it's really complicated to kick them out. We did have a problem like that last year. Uh, somebody came, locked themselves inside, they, they stole all our water, they stole the energy, uh, they basically plugged themselves onto the network. And uh, we had them there and they even, at some point they even started uh, threatening to, to shoot our dogs with a, with a pellet gun, which was really worried. So that's a bad neighbor. But us? No, we're not. We're really cool. We're always willing to help everybody. We're always willing to, I mean, I've reached out to the woman. She's really upset. She says that, you know, the noises are impossible and that, um, and that we are making her property the value. What does this have anything to do with it? Anyway, um, I'm just rambling here. We have, a, we have an aggressive uh, neighbor. We have somebody that seems to have lost all her bearings and is threatening our dogs. We're gonna see what to do. Uh, she has threatened to poison our animals. She has clearly said that she's gonna kill our dogs. So it doesn't look too good at the moment. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Just, just, uh, just a quick heads up. Um, as I always explain, there are a lot of things happening in, uh, in an animal rescue that you don't normally see. So this is an effort to show you just one more of those. Thanks a lot for being here. I'm gonna go now with Sergio to, to visit that woman and deal with her and see what she really wants. And uh, I'll keep you posted. Take care, see you tomorrow. Victor Largil and the, and the Rima are scammers, okay? The dog was starved. Those people are scamming a network of mafia of animals. Hi, those of you that watched yesterday's video were made aware that I'm battling with some personal issues. Um, I received lots of emails and beautiful texts uh, of people wishing me courage and strength. Um, it's kind of difficult to, to carry on sometimes, but, uh, but here we are, another day, another video. And today I wanted to change a little bit the tone on how the video ended yesterday. Um, and I wanted to bring you back to one of the funniest moments that we have lived in this organization. It all started as a rescue. It all started when I was asked to help rescuing a dog from Egypt. Please watch this video entirely. It's the best thing you're gonna watch today. I promise you. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. These people are scammers. Victor Larchil and the, and the Rima are scammers, okay? I'm not going to have any heart for these people. I am going to do all I can to destroy them. Last week, I was contacted by a woman from Egypt. She wrote to me saying that she had rescued a dog that had been shot with a rubber bullet by a kid. Horrible story. Then the woman tells me that she has a shelter. She has a shelter with 300 animals. So I go, oh my God, 300 animals, that, but that's massive. You know how difficult it is to run a shelter so large? And apparently she's doing it on her own and from another country. So I'm like, my God, this woman, either she is a completely lunatic or, or she is amazing. So she said that they have this dog in Egypt and that it's been shot and the, the jaw is broken and they don't have any means to operate them and the doctors are bad and this and that. And because I am Victor Larkill, the great rescuer, please help me. So, okay, I say, yeah, right. But the thing is that, you are in Egypt and your dog is badly injured and needs help immediately and I'm in Spain and for you to get your dog to me I'll have to go to Egypt and but then there is a whole process there's a whole process of vaccinations and permissions and rabies titers it's not an easy thing so I say to her look your best chance is actually not having the dog sent to me instead send him to Turkey we we have a friend organization Rima Nur uh, heart of rescue, they're great people, 
she'll be able to help you. Please, I put them in touch. Just work with her and do what she tells you because she is going to help you. I promise you, your dog will be fine. Just trust her. At first, the woman wasn't really convinced. She said that she didn't trust anybody because that's her character because the world is full of scammers and bad people and because she is the best animal rescuer in Egypt and why should she trust anybody? Because everybody is a scammer. So I said to her, look, calm down, relax. You know, Rima is great. She's gonna help you. Just do what she says. Okay, okay. I will have the dog sent to Turkey from Egypt by plane, uh, by cargo. And I said, no, 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 no. Don't do it by cargo. Don't do it by cargo. You always have to have somebody accompanying the dog. The answer is because there tend to be problems with things like this. They can't travel alone. Of course they can. There may be some hair hostages that take care of them on the flight, but please don't. This is really crucial. I do what I want. You're not going to tell me how to do it. Okay, okay, okay. Do what you want. So she puts the dog on a cargo plane and sent him. The dog arrives to Istanbul arrives to customs and surprise, surprise, the dog gets stuck, gets retained by customs. The Egyptians fill their own paperwork. Okay, we knew something like this may happen. I suspected something like this was going to happen. Actually, I told her that it was going to happen, but she didn't listen. Okay, so the dog is stuck in customs. What do we do? So at this point, enter my friend, Rima Nuriola. She's great, a real hero. So for two days, she goes to customs, speaks to these people, negotiates with them, please, please let her enter, fills up new paperwork, gets their attorney is involved, they have new paperwork, she goes and feeds the dog every day, in the morning, in the evening, the, I mean, really, yeah? I mean, an incredible job. So in the meantime, the woman from Egypt starts really getting nervous and you are not giving me updates and where is the dog and why is the dog there? Look, woman, you sent the dog with the wrong paperwork. We're dealing with the mess you have created. Just, just sit down, relax, don't worry, okay? We're gonna deal with it. So finally, after two days of doing this, Rima just gets the dog out of the airport. She's so happy. We got Victoria out. We got Vic, Vic out. She's out. So happy. Posts a picture. Really happy moment. Reaction of this woman? I don't believe it's the same dog. Send me the paperwork. I want to see it. I have to see it out of the cage. You have to show me that she's alive. We were shocked. I mean, really, we have been battling with customs for two days and this woman just goes nuts. She doesn't believe it's the same dog and she's like, you have to tell me where you're taking her and what clinic and what are you going to do now and send me updates, send me videos. Honestly, I mean, woman, we're doing you a favor. You send us your dog that is injured. You feel the wrong paperwork. You haven't trusted us. Just now it's time for us to do our work. And, and not possible, not possible. So I say, look, why don't you go and take your dog and get the hell out of there? I mean, really, you're a mess. You're a mess. And then she says, no, I'm going to go to, to Turkey and I'm going to get the dog and I will take the dog to a hotel and I will treat her myself there. So I say, but what? Are you completely nuts? Look, for the next few days, incredible, incredible harassment, incredible. Rima freaks out. She goes and she takes the dog to, to her trusted clinic, starts treating, stabilize her, make sure she doesn't feel any pain, treat with antibiotics, and then when it's the right time, we'll operate her and we'll fix the jaw. In the meantime, that woman goes to the internet and starts saying, these people, they have killed my dog, my dog is dead, I know she's dead, Victor has organized everything, he stole my dog, he's a scammer, and my God, and they kill my dog, they kill my dog, help me, they kill my dog. Woman, <laughs> here's a video of your dog, the dog is in a clinic, he's being treated. It's not true, you have killed my dog, you have killed my dog, and starts calling her friends. And they all, they all, my God, oh my God, what's happening to you? These guys, they are killing my dog. I don't know. I'm going to Turkey. Oh my God, you're going to Turkey. So the woman, <laughs> this is so crazy. She just jumps on a plane, 
using the donations of her bunch of friends and she flies to, to Turkey. And the next day she's in customs and she's implying that we have killed the dog and the customs say no, I mean your dog left the airport, she's not, she wasn't dead, that's all they can say. So she tracks down the dog at the clinic where she, where she is and she arrives there and sees her and oh my god, she's alive, great. So I'm gonna take some selfies and I'm gonna make a video of me with the dog. So she makes a video with the dog telling everybody that the dog is not dead but he's about to die. Is about to die because we are not feeding her and we are not giving her any water because all we want is to make a video and to make money by the way no one has heard about this dog before i mean you've seen this this is the first video that i make on this issue so the woman is there saying they're killing my dog they're killing my dog she doesn't say the dog is dead anymore now they say we're killing her we're making her suffer she arrives there with the police and the vets are freaking out i mean it's a mess so they, they, they kick them out. They say, just please get, get out and file a report, do whatever you want. So at this moment, when they leave the hospital, my friend Rima arrives, I tell her, just please get the dog out of there, make the dog disappear. We just don't want to have these crazy people. I mean, this is not a circus. I mean, we're trying to do something good here. We're trying to do a good job. These people are bringing chaos and madness with them. So Rima goes and takes the dog and goes to another clinic. I mean, Istanbul is a city of 14 million people. There are hundreds, if not thousands of vet clinics and uh, she knows all of them and she's great clients with many of them. So there's no shortage of clinics where Victoria can be treated. So Victoria leaves and then the woman comes back and oh my God, the dog is not there. They've killed my dog again. My dog is dead. The mafia is killing my dog. They stole my dog. I'm, I tell you, from the distance, I'm just looking at this and I'm thinking, but these people are so crazy. And then she starts posting these crazy videos. She just leave. look, this is, this, is, this is the last one she posted. Victor Larchil and the, and the Rima are scammers, okay? Victor, she let the dog suffer. The dog was starved. Don't come fucking here asking me to wait. Just to wait. The embassies, if you are American, go to the American embassy. They are trying to waste the time. The dog is okay. The dog is not fucking okay. Rima, Victor Larchil, okay? Let's adopt Deutschland. Heart of rescue. Those people are scamming a network of mafia of animals. Mervat went crazy. And what happened to Victoria after that? Okay, we've made a little montage of images of Victoria and her life right now. Rima, heart of rescue, are of course in Turkey, rescuing and doing amazing work. And Victoria is doing great. Have a look at this. This is Victoria. So guys, um, I'm now out of the house. I have to deal with stuff. Just thank you for being here one more day. Hi, I have a confession to make. My real name is not Victor Larkil. My name is... Maribel, just oh, today take the mask off. You cannot be with the mask every day. <laughs> Why are you hiding? Victor. There has to be something obscure, something hidden. Today I'm gonna explain the truth behind my name. Are you ready? It all started 
15 years ago when I started rescuing animals in Turkey. Uh, initially it started like a very small operation, rescuing dogs, injured dogs that I found in front of my home. And then, you know, took him to the vet, found them homes. And then little by little, little by little, started rescuing more. And then more and more people knew that there was this foreigner that nobody knew that was rescuing dogs. Until one day, it got to the point where I had to take a decision. You see, when you're a foreigner in Turkey, many people mistrust you just because you're a foreigner. It's called xenophobia, and unfortunately, there's a lot of it in Turkey, and especially related to animal rights. People think, oh, how is it possible that there is this foreigner here, comes, show the situation of the dogs, this is not good, it's making us look bad. So I found myself in Turkey rescuing dogs, uh, working, I had my business, I was doing real estate business and corporate finance. And um, you know, during the day I was having meetings in companies, you know, I was known as a, as a businessman. And then did I really want to be known as an activist? Did I want my name to be associated to animal rescue in a country? where the enemy, the real enemy, was the state. So I thought, no, nah, bad idea. <laughs> it's a really bad idea. So let's use, a, let's use a pseudonym. Let me explain something about pseudonyms. Uh, people don't use different names just because they are criminals. There is a variety of reasons why people use different names. Historically, writers have used different names, artists, I don't know, Madonna is not called Madonna, nor is Seal, nor is Bono. Think about just about any artist that you can think of. Chances are he's not using his real name. Think of uh, any famous YouTuber, PewDiePie. His real name is not PewDiePie, it's a ridiculous name. His real name is uh, Felix. Think of uh, other famous gamers, YouTubers, Ninja. Think about any any famous YouTuber, any big YouTuber. They don't use their real name, Boogie. I don't know. Very few use their names. But the truth is that I started using Victor Larkin name just to separate my life as a businessman from my life as an activist. And it worked really well. It worked to the point where my pseudonym, Victor Larkin, became much bigger and much more famous than I could ever be. Z. Pero qué, pero qué te pasa? Pero qué te pasa a ti? Quiere jugar. Quiere jugar. She wants to play. Fast forward 15 years later, and Victor Larkhill is the name of a of an activist known everywhere. Well, I mean, it's like I have a medium-sized channel, but very. I mean, a lot of people recognize my name and they associate, they associate it with animal rescue. While my real name is reserved for my friends and family. At some point, I remember in Istanbul, I once gave on social media the private telephone number of the mayor of Istanbul. You think about it, I mean, it, was, it was extreme activism. We were, we were really radical. So it wasn't a good idea to, to have my real name known by everybody else. Canela, ven aquí, come here. I, okay, she's, uh, she's taking a pee. <laughs> Sorry, after that she's gonna come for sure. So this is the story, and uh, and the years passed, and the name became big, and my personal name, Ay Canela, Ay Canela, Ay Canelita, ¿cómo estás? And and that's the story, really. There's no secret about it. Everybody knows my my real name is, <laughs> but the brand, Ay Canela. ¿Qué te pasa? So, more facts about me. Now, so many people are so interested. I was born in a, I was, yeah. I was born in a small town here in Spain, next to Barcelona, called Lleida. The kind of small town where not much happens. Uh, back in those days, the 70s was much smaller than it is today. I studied there. I had an, had an okay childhood. Uh, my parents divorced when I was five years old, but I stayed with my mother, who gave me every opportunity that she could. 
I started, uh, I started there and then I moved to Paris and London where I studied finance and I graduated from the European Business School. Worked in London for a number of years, nothing to do with animals, nothing to do with activism. Usually those things are not planned, they usually happen because something happens and that something was the fact that I started finding dogs in the streets and the fact that my own dog, Simba, died on an operation table. That was the catalyst for the creation of Let's Adopt. Since uh, we began rescuing, well, we've saved thousands of animals. Uh, we always focus on those that needed us most, those that were in worse shape, those that had been rejected by everyone else. For example, just think, think about this dog, Canela, okay, Canela. She's a pit bull, she has three legs. One of the legs doesn't work too well. Plus, she doesn't get along with any other animal. Think about it. Who will take care of a dog like Canela? And like her, thousands of animals ever since. So, my real name is not Victor Larkin. My name is... Uh, and that's it. So now you know something that you didn't know before. So next time that you hear that I'm using a fake name, just remember this video and the explanation behind it. And think of all these famous artists and all these YouTubers and all these painters and everyone else that has ever used a pseudonym. For, for valid reasons. We're not trying to hide, we're just trying to put a layer of privacy between our work and our real lives. Do you value your privacy? I do. That's the reason why very few people has ever seen my kids. That's the reason why very few people have access to my private life. My life is pretty much open uh, for everyone to see but you have to keep a limit, otherwise, bad idea. People tend to encroach onto your life and then bad things can happen. So, do you value your privacy? So do I. In the meantime, I want you to, to appreciate me, not for me, but for our work, for the videos you see for the extraordinary rescues that we perform, for the before and after stories, for the way these animals look in the videos and for the way they look at you after they've been saved, for the beautiful properties that we run, for the massive commitment that this thing requires. And why are there so many flies? Canelita, canela, da un beso, ven aquí. She's so incredible. Ay, me vas a morder. Me vas a morder. Me va a morder. Es boca cepo. Me vas a morder. Ay, es boca cepo. <laughs> so, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for your help and support. You won. One day I'll make a, a video about my life. I promise you it's not so interesting. Anyway, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for your support. Look at this baby, Canela. Canela is alive today because of the way you help and because of your donations. So give us a hand. Please help us continue saving lives and taking care of animals like Canela. ¿Qué? ¿Qué pasa? Canela, tú. Pero, ¿Qué pasa? Pero, ¿qué pasa? Ya que te salta, eh. Me va a saltar. Ay, me va. <laughs> Donate. Help us take care of Canela and all the others. Thank you very much and I'll see you tomorrow. Hello everybody, we have merch! Yeah, you mean World Animal Awareness Society? Well, I'm a volunteer with the World Animal Awareness Society, Emerson. 
I volunteer my voice for use in animal rescue videos. And I don't know if you know this, but everyone at the World Animal Awareness Society is a volunteer. But what do they do? They're award-winning volunteer filmmakers who have interacted with 2,200 animal welfare nonprofits, including Maddie's Fund and Austin Pets Alive, providing information-rich content to more than 45 countries in the last 10 years. Dad, what's that mean? Okay, Em, how about this? They make short movies about animals that are in peril, that are hurting, you know, in bad shape or dying or homeless in the streets. They film rescuers doing heroic work so they can focus on saving lives. The World Animal Awareness Society posts the rescue videos on social media, and then they're broadcast on TV, sharing the heroic stories with people all over the world so they can understand what's really going on. Cool. I like animals. How did you start volunteering? Well, I met their director through social media and saw the work that they were doing and knew that I could help their cause. So I asked if I could volunteer. I am very fortunate to have really great jobs providing the voice to so many shows that I believe it's important to give back. Since I've been volunteering with the World Animal Awareness Society, they have created the seventh most influential YouTube channel for dog rescue lovers in the world, WA2S Films. That's so cool. Hey dad, nice job. Do you think I could volunteer too? You already are, Em. You already are. You're watching the World Animal Awareness Society. Yep, that'll do, Emerson. That'll do. You're watching the World Animal Awareness Society. <laughs>